Hey guys, it's Daniel or Dan J, and today I'm going to be reviewing my general surgery rotation, which I just finished. So I had started it in December, I finished in April, and that was four months in F1. So I'll start by talking about a typical day, which similar to the endocrine review I did, the typical day started at 8 a.m. and we would print off the lists for the three different ward areas that we deal with in general surgery. And then we would decide amongst us based on how many people were there, who was gonna go where. And the ward round was usually led by the registrar of the week or on sometimes it was the registrar of the day. And obviously when it's the registrar of the day, it would take a little bit longer because the person who was doing the ward round would have to get to know the patients. Whereas if it's registrar of the week, it gets shorter and shorter throughout the week as the registrar learns who people are. And there was also some times where if a patient was medically fit, you might see them on your own. So from a surgical point of view, they didn't really need anything going on. And you might see them if it's a more busy day or if they're not at their bedside when the round is going because it was so fast paced, then you'd be asked by the registrar to come back and see them because it likely wouldn't need the registrar's input for what happened next with that patient. And we wouldn't prep notes like on endocrine, we'd pretty much grab a laptop or grab a computer, whatever, and just get going. As soon as the lists were printed, we'd start. So if you're on the first ward, you definitely start straight away. You get going, blah, blah, blah. And the other two ward areas that were covered, you might actually have some time to prep. So it'd be a little less fast paced, but then that also meant waiting for an entire ward or two wards to get done before your patients got seen, which could be a bit of waiting around. And pretty much all the plans were very senior led as the ward round was very senior led and you just carried out those plans and you would do the jobs in the afternoon. There didn't seem to be very many jobs in total compared to how many people there were, especially on a well-staffed day. And I'd say a well-staffed day would be around three or four people being on the team. Whereas a maximally staffed day, there were some days where there were nine or 10 of us and we literally had some people who if you were keen in surgery, they'd be like, why don't you just go to surgery for the day? Which is pretty nice about being on a general surgery rotation, especially if you're like me and you like surgery. So a lot of our jobs would be microbiology discussions, discussing people's surgeries with other teams, with radiology, getting scans, or maybe discussing medical issues with the other medical teams around the hospital, which just meant putting out a referral and you get bleeped back when the person answering the referral had got to yours. And I would say on most days, there wasn't much, but on those minimally staffed days, the minimal staffing on general surgery was two people. So from a max of nine to a minimum of two and maybe averaging around four or five, you can see the difference in workloads. I wouldn't say there were stressful days. I just say the workload was equal to that of the medical rotation that I did before. So endocrine. So the evening on calls for surgery were very similar to the medical ones, except for the fact that you were much less likely to get bleeped. I would say that you have a much more chill time in general surgery in general, just because the patients you're looking after are less likely to have acute deteriorating events where you might get bleeped for them, or many of the things that are done throughout the day will cover the patients during the night and during those three hours of evening cover. However, there were some acutely deteriorating patients and that's also a great part of medicine or being a doctor, just being able to handle the situation by yourself and then get support where you need it and being able to make a whole assessment and judgment and then obviously have senior support in that respect. So for the patient caseload, all surgical patients came through through the surgical take and we had a hot team, which was the surgical take team and the cold team, which was the ward team. So the surgical take would run from Monday to Thursday and then Friday to Sunday. And so on Fridays and on Mondays, new patients would be added to the lists. And that is where they become the ward team's responsibility. So the take could be busy because obviously every single patient who is surgical, who's being admitted through ED or from their GP is gonna come into the surgical take from Monday to Thursday and then Friday to Sunday and that could be like 30 to 40 patients that you'd have to handle um, on your own for the first two days and then for the second two days of the week one you'd get a second F1 or over the weekend it would just be you and sometimes it was great sometimes it wasn't there's also a massive list that we had to keep updated with all the results and all the things that were going on and patients would be moving around left right and center it was something to get used to and actually I did my QI project on the surgical induction and improving that just to help people for the next rotation. And I guess I'll probably talk about it in a future vlog on how that went, but that list was everything. And also for the ward-based team, that list is everything. And pretty much if a patient's not on that list, 
they might not get seen, which highlights the importance of the list. So essentially in this format, it meant a lot of the patients were post-surgical. There are also a lot of patients who would come in and may not be suitable for surgery or may not want surgery and they just be treated with antibiotics and that would form a lot of the patients. And usually the patients who are being treated with antibiotics only stayed longer than the patients who just came in for surgery. Throughout these different patient caseloads, it helped to easily identify common surgical conditions and also post-surgical complications and have a little bit of understanding on what to do with each one. So in terms of senior support, it was variable at times. So on the ward-based teams, it was quite easy to contact your registrar either during that ward round if needed or after the ward round. But towards the end of the rotation, they started scheduling in the regs to do clinics, which made them slightly harder to contact, but usually we didn't even need to contact them. So it was completely fine. However, on the surgical take, which is the on-call team, a lot of the time the registrar or the SHO might be in theatres, meaning that it's harder to contact them, but they're not unreachable. And usually either one of the three of the registrar, the SHO or the consultant was contactable if you needed them. It just was variable and it made it harder to contact them because you couldn't just bleep them because likely they wouldn't answer. So you'd have to go find them wherever they were but that's just an extra step. So in terms of learning, we still had the weekly F1 teaching, which everyone gets every hospital because it's part of your core hours, part of your e-portfolio. But then we also had weekly departmental teaching, which was also variable, but there were many different topics, which one of the surgeons organized himself just to bring people in and get them to teach, which I thought was really useful as well. And the level he was putting it on at, it also counted as core teaching. So we could double our hours of core teaching whilst on the surgical rotation, which is always great. And in Bath, they also had an ESAC week, which stands for the Emergency Surgical Assessment Clinic, in which you basically for a week would sit in with a consultant for the morning and then assess people who were seen as not too high risk to send home. So they'd be sent home and then they might come back and you'd assess them there. They might get an ultrasound scan, which otherwise they would have just stayed in hospital for no reason, or they might get CT scans, all those sorts of things. And you just basically assess them and see what needs to happen next, whether they get surgery that day or like abscesses you could do it there on the spot blah 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 and it was a really good week for learning getting stuff done for your e-portfolio and in the afternoons there was surgical opportunities as well so I got to scrub in a few times and it was just a great place for learning as well and getting some skills done getting that e-portfolio all up to scratch so like I said the various caseload helped you to become more familiar with surgical conditions common ones and post-surgical complications so what do we see a lot of appendicitis was a big one, biliary issues, so biliary colic, cholangitis, cholecystitis, cholecystitis being the most common one there, bowel obstructions, small and large as well, abscesses of the bowel, which are a common one as well, and also leg and groin abscesses were a big one to be seen as well. I think the general surgery team also did abscesses of the arms and that sort of thing, but less common, but people with things like hydradenitis, I saw a few of those patients and saw incisions and drainages of those abscesses. So what skills could you learn in general surgery? So aside from the basics of cannulas and all this crazy stuff, there was the assisting in theater, which is always great. As an SHO, it's something that will be a bigger thing and learning how to control cameras in laparotomy, using the tools, that sort of thing, suturing, uh, gluing, all the, all the simple basic things that you learn in theatres and might be useful if you like surgery and want to do a surgical career, you get to learn through things like the ESAC week or when there's good enough staffing, you can always go to theatres, which was a great part of the rotation. And I love the practical skills, so I love that. So what would I rate this out of 10? I think I'd give it an eight and a half out of 10. I thought it was a really good rotation. What could have brought it up by 1.5? I don't know, but I don't want to be giving things 10 out of 10s out here. Perfect, hmm, what could have made it perfect? I think at times, because of the reduced caseload, it was a little on the boring side, which obviously, who doesn't like a chill day of work, but there's certain expectations of you and you don't want to sit there looking like a lemon, like you don't actually do any work, 
even though there is no work to be done. And yeah, you just have to be a bit more proactive, but on certain days, there could just literally be nothing to do. I'm not gonna lie, I'd rather have a day that's kind of structured along and you kind of have a little bit of work to do at all the stages, rather than a lot of work in the morning and then barely anything in the afternoon. But yeah, let me know if you have a general surgery rotation coming up or if you've done one and what you thought of it. And also let me know what you thought of this review and leave any questions you have about the general surgery rotation or life as a doctor in Bath down below. And please do leave a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe down below if you're new. And as ever, it's been a pleasure and I'll talk to you in the next video.